Today's Thursday, July 25th, and we actually just cut the design of the field, which is actually pretty neat because we generally don't cut the field until around mid-August, sometimes even like the third week in August. We're kind of ahead of schedule this year. The crop has really done well. Oftentimes what happens out here is we just don't know where the crop's gonna develop. So that is one of the more difficult things that we have to put up with that we would not have to put up with if we were a traditional inside haunted attraction in a warehouse or if we had a forest someplace where the path kind of stayed the same every year. Our path every year is different and it's largely, almost entirely dependent upon where the crop develops and where it does not. As you can see right here on July 25th, this stuff is, is five and a half feet tall and that's ahead of schedule. On this side, we have stuff that's more, you know, like in the four or four and a half foot um, height range. And so this, this is about normal where it would normally be this time of year. So we, and we have some areas that are only about three feet tall. That's completely normal. I went ahead and cut the path today based on a similar design um, that we've done in the past with a few extra flares out here and there from scenes to scenes just because we had such a good crop. What we have to do now is we just cross our fingers and hope that we don't get stuck in a big drought. We can move irrigation out here and we have done that so far, but as the crop gets taller, it does get really hard to irrigate. So one of the benefits of getting everything cut today is that we can now have paths to put the irrigation pipe on so the water doesn't get stopped by the sorghum itself. So it, it has the trajectory that we need in order to, to water the field. Feeling pretty good about where we are on July 25th. We still got a couple months to go. So if, if an area doesn't develop that we've already cut, the benefit of cutting this early is that this, the sorghum will continue to grow. We can also build some scenes in there and we can modify the path. That front wall, like if you're in the queue lines, you're looking at the front wall, that's 45 to 46 feet across that panel is. We're gonna build a house structure about 30 feet, 32, so there's been some gaps on the sides. We'll do the siding. We're gonna do a couple illusions in the windows, and I've talked to Kevin about that. We're gonna do like, you know, the ghosts kind of looking out the windows. Should have brought a big piece of paper in here. But, so if we're, we're looking this way, that wall that was there, so this is the, the balcony. So there'll be a balcony, and there'll be a porch below the balcony. So those light bulbs up there that we have on both sides of the stage, those are those flame bulbs. I am thinking we're gonna use a lot of those this year because that's gonna give you this realistic flame look throughout the haunt and some other of those little LED lights that um, I bought some last year. We had them in a new container that I can actually program. They'll give you a flame effect or a strobe effect or whatever. If we can darken all that up, that's gonna feel quite a bit different. Now. So we're gonna try to just basically take the field, shake it up, change it up a little bit, but that facade will be the big, be the big job.